On August 16, 2018, an article by Lisa Littman of Brown University was published in the journal PLOS One, titled Rapid Onset Gender Dysphoria in Adolescents and Young Adults, a Study of Parental Reports. It looked at data taken from 256 surveys completed by parents recruited from three websites, we'll come back to those, where parents had reported rapid onsets of gender dysphoria. Littman's stated purpose for these surveys was to document and explore observations to describe this presentation of gender dysphoria that is supposedly inconsistent with existing research literature. In the background section of the article, Littman expresses concern that current literature on youth gender dysphoria, especially regarding persistence and desistance rates, only included subjects whose gender dysphoria began in childhood, rather than including kids who developed dysphoria in adolescence. She also describes a social and peer contagion that may influence behaviors in adolescence. And although she can't cite studies that link social or peer contagions to transgender identity directly, she cites their role in eating disorders as a mechanism that could influence trans identification, especially thanks to the increase in visibility, social media, and user-generated online content about transgender issues and transition. From all of this, she has two emerging hypotheses. One, that social contagion is a key determinant of rapid onset gender dysphoria, and two, that rapid onset gender dysphoria is a maladaptive coping mechanism for adolescents and young adults. The study was lauded by conservatives and anti-trans activists alike as proof of trans identification spreading like a virus among our children. Breitbart described it as, study draws transgender ire, peer pressure and prior psychiatric illness linked to gender issues in teens. LifeSite News, a conservative Christian website, published an article titled, Parents Beware, Rapid Onset Gender Dysphoria, a Social Contagion Among Girls. Parents from Mumset, which calls itself the UK's most popular website for parents, saw the study as validation of all their fears of trans rights advocates targeting their children. The American College of Pediatricians, a conservative advocacy group rather than a medical organization who believe transgender people have a mental illness and believe that it is self-evident that there is a purposeful design to human nature, cited the study when advocating against trans-affirming health care. A letter to the actual medical organization, the American Academy of Pediatrics, from an online group of parents of trans kids, supposedly with over a thousand members, begged them to reconsider their affirmation-oriented approach and cited Littman's study as proof of their kids being victims of a social contagion. This letter really got my attention. Here's how Littman's article was presented. A recent groundbreaking study of an emergent late-onset predominantly female trans-identifying patient population finds significant parallels with the phenomenon of eating disorders and includes social contagion as a key factor. And it doesn't. This study doesn't find proof of anything. It was, from the beginning, an attempt to mine for data to get a specific outcome. Transgender Trend is, shockingly, a website for parents questioning the trans narrative. They're probably most infamous for their resource pack for schools, which objects to the use of inaccurate labels such as cis, discourages publicly celebrating a transgender child, and describes trans kids as a biologically impossible situation. We'll dive into that guide a little bit more later, but because of this guide and, well, everything else about their site, they were uninvited from the Stonewall Children and Young People Conference for holding well-publicized anti-trans views. They are explicitly anti-affirmational in their approach to trans kids, and, like Fourth Wave Now, any subject recruited through this website has been conditioned by its content to reject their child's trans identity.